In this video, we'll be looking at physical quantities. Now, what exactly is a physical quantity? When you hear the term physical quantity, what automatically comes to mind? Now, for some people, when they hear the term physical quantity, they may automatically think of something they could actually reach out and touch, like a marker, a pen, um, a desk, an eraser, and so on. But what we will basically explain in this video that physical quantities don't necessarily refer to things you can actually reach out and touch. So, what is a physical quantity? Essentially, a physical quantity is any measurable property. A physical quantity is any property which can be measured. And usually, if something can be measured, it means it can have a magnitude, it, must have a, it can have a magnitude, and it can also have a unit. So we can say that basically that physical quantities so physical quantities have a magnitude and unit. Now I'll put an asterisk beside the word unit because as we'll explain later, not all physical quantities have a unit. Right? So whenever we measure a physical quantity, we must be able to state the magnitude of the physical quantity and the unit it, if it exists. So what are some physical quantities that we may need to measure on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, think about it. If you're driving in a car, you can actually look at your speedometer and tell how far, sorry, how fast you're traveling. You can also tell how, um, the mileage of the car. So basically, you're able to measure the distance that the car has traveled over a certain time. So those are just two physical quantities we can actually measure. We can take a meter rule and we can measure the length of, um, of a desk. We can measure the dimensions of a room, the length, the width. And from those, we can actually calculate the area of the room and so on. We can measure um, how fast a particular runner is actually traveling. Um, if we can measure, for instance, the distance traveled by the runner and the time that the runner um, takes to cover this distance. So we can actually calculate the runner's average speed. So these are some examples of physical quantities. Now I said before that physical quantities have a magnitude and they also, in most cases, have a unit. Now magnitude is just a fancy word for size. So when we state a physical quantity, we can actually use the magnitude to determine if it actually makes sense. And we can also use the unit stated to determine if our statement is correct. So for instance, suppose we quote a person's height as, suppose we say a person's height is equal to 20. What is wrong with that statement? Now, the height represents a physical quantity and the number 20 would represent the magnitude. But what is missing? There is no unit. And if there is no unit, we cannot tell if this statement makes sense, right? So whenever we state um, a physical quantity, not only should we state the magnitude, but we should also state the, the unit. And that way we'll be able to tell if the statement makes sense. Now, let's say for instance, we go a little bit further and we state a person's height, not just as 20, but this time we're going to add a unit. And we write the height equals 20 meters. Now, does this make sense? So in the previous statement, we had only a magnitude and no unit. So the unit was missing, the statement was incomplete. In this particular case, we include the unit, the meter, right? Now, does this statement make sense? Can persons re realistically be of this height? Can somebody be 20 meters? No, it is not possible. Right? At least in, not in our solar system. Maybe there exists another solar system where persons of this height are known to exist, but definitely not in ours. So by writing this statement as height equals 20 meters or the height of a person equals 20 meters, we know that this doesn't exist because persons of this size are not known to exist. So we've seen the importance of stating um, the magnitude as well as the unit of a physical quantity. So we've looked at what a physical quantity is and we've essentially touched on um, how important it is to so see the magnitude of a physical quantity as well as its unit. Now what are the different types 
of physical quantities. In science, there are basically two types of physical quantities, right? And the two types of physical quantities are base or fundamental quantities. So we have base or fundamental quantities. And we also have what are called derived quantities. Now, what are base quantities or fundamental quantities? Now, in some textbooks, you may see the word base. In other books, you may see the word fundamental. Um, and they're often used interchangeably. So, what do you see? The word base quantities or fundamental quantities, essentially, they mean the same thing. Right? So, what are the base fu or fundamental quantities? And how important are they? Now, there are seven fundamental or base quantities. Now, at the CSEC level, you may have been introduced to six, but there is a seventh, which is not often used, at least not much at this level, but it is regarded as one of the seven fundamental quantities, and therefore, for completeness, we will actually state the, um, the seventh, or this, the seven fundamental quantities. So the seven fundamental quantities, of course, are length, mass, time, temperature, electric current, amount of substance, and the last but by no means least is what is called luminous intensity. So luminous intensity. So these are the seven fundamental or base quantities. And what exactly does it mean? It basically means that these seven quantities um, are the foundation or the building blocks of all other physical quantities. So every single physical quantity that you can actually think of, speed, um, area, volume, temperature, well, pressure, right? Um, these are all other physical quantities which are not included in this list of seven, and therefore they are not base or fundamental quantities. However, they can be expressed as a combination of one or more of these physical quantities. So the seven base or fundamental quantities are length, mass, time, temperature, electric current, amount of substance, and luminous intensity. We see, generally see the first five quite often, depending on the area of physics or science you're looking at, for those of you who do chemistry, you'd of course be very familiar with this one. I'm sure you know about the mole, right? Which of course happens to be the unit of amount of substance. But of course you may never have to encounter this one again unless you're basically just required to state the seven fundamental quantities, right? So usually unless you do physics up to a much higher level, you probably will never have to deal with this one um, again, right? So now each of these fundamental quantities they have symbol the symbol um, is in most cases um, the in some cases of least the symbolism could be the letter or the first letter in in the name of the physical quantity so the symbol for length is l the symbol for mass is m the symbol for time is t the symbol for temperature, some cases you may see a capital T, or in other cases you may see a Greek letter theta, right? So you may see this a capital T for temperature, you may also see the Greek letter theta. The symbol for electric current is a, up, an uppercase I. And the symbol for amount of substance, um, because amount of substance um, well, the SI unit of the amount of substance is a mole. And in many cases, you may see the symbol for amount of substance being used as an N to represent essentially the number of moles in a substance. Right? So there we have, well, the, 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 um, the symbols of the first six fundamental quantities.
So we have the seven fundamental quantities or the seven base quantities and we have the symbols for the first six. Now what is the symbol of um, luminous intensity? The symbol for luminous intensity is an I with a subscript V where the V usually represents some photometric quantity. Now as we mentioned before, luminous intensity is a fundamental quantity but of course unless you do physics to a much higher level you may never encounter luminous intensity you may never be required to calculate luminous intensity and so we will not be putting so much emphasis on luminous intensity but of course for completeness you still need to be able to um, list the seven fundamental quantities or the seven base quantities